Joining me now is Dan Watson from the Huntsville Festival of the Arts. Dan, thanks very much for taking the time to come in today and, and talk to us. It's been a, an interesting year uh, for you yeah. guys. I'm sure that's like the least that you could say about <laughs> what's <laughs> happened. Um, we did chat a little earlier, I think in the summertime, we, we, we chatted a bit about what was happening, but I, I kind of wanted to bring you back in just to do a bit of a year in review of what's happened with HFA. So um, first of all, just give me an overview of how things have gone for you. Yeah, I mean, we've struggled like so many people um, and so many people in the entertainment industry that it's, it's the first thing to get locked down and it's going to be the last thing to get back going. Um, so it's been uh, a struggle just because it's not business as usual. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've had to sort of reinvent and come up with some interesting ideas and just try to keep active and supporting the community as best we can. So what would, I guess, what would you say was the biggest struggle for you this year, basically? I think really the uncertainty of it, mm -hmm. um, because it's really, you know, we would normally, for example, we'd normally be planning our summer season next year, right now. Um, that's not happening because we really don't know what summer's gonna look like. So what, uh, we, we w there was a lot of times where we would be planning something and, and trying to figure out, you know, how to, how to do it and how mm -hmm. to make it all happen, and then things would change, and suddenly we can't do it, or, uh, we'd have to scrap that idea or drastically change it. So it, the, the uncertainty was just really, really, really hard to, um, you know, the, it just felt like the ground was shifting below our feet all the time. Um, so we, we, you know, we really pivoted actually to doing a lot of uh, outdoor things and then also trying to do a lot of arts education as well this year. Well, I'm assuming losing the Algonquin Theatre was a pretty massive blow to how you were doing things as well, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, those venues, De uh, and Deerhurst Resort, and um, just uh, those are, are set up for concerts. And so not being able to do anything there um, is really, you know, that's our home. We do 20 to 25 shows at the Algonquin Theatre mm -hmm. each year. So uh, we didn't, you know, the last one we did was in March. and. Um, and, you know, it's disappointing, too, because we were really having a great year. <laughs> yeah, there was a <laughs> lot of stuff on the docket that looked very interesting. Yeah, and, and I was very excited about the summer season and, and all those sorts of things. But, you know, it, 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 you, do, you can look on the positive side of things. And uh, with these constraints comes some, you know, creativity and interesting yeah. things. And so, like I said, we, we tried to pivot and do stuff outside and, uh, and tried to, you know, online things. And, and basically doing a lot of things that we probably would never have tried otherwise right and so that's kind of a, a really fun great thing to do as well well I, I to borrow your word which I love you did pivot I mean um, to bring up the example of music at noon mm. that was such an interesting initiative that you guys took on can you tell me a bit about what happened with that yeah new music at noon is a normally a, a series that we do every music concerts at noon for a week in the summertime and uh, obviously we couldn't do that so we did it online so um, we worked with uh, your TV Muskoka and we recorded the concerts in different venues around Muskoka and uh, and then aired them online um, so that you know those kinds of things are and, and we did a few drive-ins we did uh, some boat in movies we mm -hmm. did uh, you know we had a act one thing that was really great actually the canoe mural project that we did which was a group seven uh, had an artist working downtown so we tried to stay active and bring some liveliness and creativity uh, in a safe way and in a way that people could enjoy and maybe bring you know a little bit of smile to people's faces this forcible yeah. creativity too that made you come up with these ideas are these now ideas that you can carry forward and maybe use beyond COVID? I mean, the music at noon was very interesting, but there are other things as well, right? Yeah, definitely. And that, that's, that, that, as I say, it's like things you've tried that you wouldn't have and you think, oh, you know what, we could, we could probably do that again. Um, so, I mean, definitely next summer, I, I don't know what gonna, it's going to look like. I have a feeling it's going to look fairly similar to the last summer. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm hoping a little bit less uh, um, with the new vaccine and, and so that it'll be a little, it, it'll be a little easier. But, uh, so some of these things, yeah, we'll definitely probably carry over and, um, and continue with, uh, in the future. So, so let's talk about the future because 2021 is just a couple of weeks away now. Yeah. Um, again, I know uncertainty is reigning over, but what do you have planned? What, what can you move forward with right now? Yeah, so, I mean, there's, everything's kind of provisional and, and our planning cycle, like I said, we would have been planning right now for the summer. We have things 
um, that we're looking at doing, but mm -hmm. we probably aren't not going to pull the trigger on anything until you know March or April uh, before we really start getting serious into it. Before we can really know. So, uh, our, you know, we live in such a beautiful place. And what we discovered this year is people want to be outdoors um, and they want to uh, enjoy all that we have to offer. And so that pairing of the arts, whether it's concerts, whether it's visual art, whether it's theater or um, different ways of doing things with the outdoor spaces, I think that, that'll be our focus uh, for sure next summer um, to find ways that we can you know, have those pairings. So for example, we, we did a, an event called um, uh, the Huntsville Homegrown series where it was axe throwing, you came you got to do axe throwing, archery, and then you got to have a, a delicious meal served on site and got and saw a concert. So those kinds of packages probably wouldn't have done that otherwise. So that's kind of a, an example that we may do stuff like that, you okay. know, where it's kind of where we're, we're creating an experience that uh, you can't have anywhere else um, other than Muskoka or Huntsville. Well, it sounds like it's going to be fun, um, and I look forward to seeing what's on the docket. The most important question, Dan, I guess right now is how can people continue to support the Huntsville Festival of the Arts and, and make sure that you thrive uh, through this trying time? Sure thing. So, um, I mean, you can all visit us, HuntsvilleFestival.ca. We still have ongoing programming. We're going to have some online things in the new year. Um, and, you know, if people do want to become members, our membership package is uh, there uh, as well. Or if they, they want to donate, that's, that's also um, more than welcome. We're a charitable organization. So we're, we're, we're trying to stay um, uh, active and with either concerts or, as I said, a lot of educational opportunities for kids. So. Membership might make a good Christmas gift too, right? Absolutely. There's a nice stocking yeah. stuffer for somebody that's really interested in the art scene. For sure, yeah. So yeah. maybe people want to head over to your website before a couple of days left before Christmas. Lots that's of right, good time, last right? minute. Yeah, you can go online. It's open all the time. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Dan, uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to come in. I wish you all the best for 2021. And of course, uh, uh, Merry Christmas to you and your family. Yeah, you too. Thank you. 